Hey, what's up guys? Thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. I want to welcome you to my channel where we talk about everything to do with the Enneagram. And we're going to be looking at type four, being in a relationship with a type four, doing a study on relationships right now as you get ready to uh, prepare for the certificate program I'm offering in Enneagram Coaching for Relationships. You can learn more about uh, both of the coaching programs um, offered on my website at TomLahue.com. Also, you can schedule coaching appointments if you want to talk to me about knowing more about your type or how to be a healthier version of you or how to relate better to the people in your life. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, thanks to my patrons. I really appreciate your help and support for the channel as well. It's cool that people like this stuff and like this content. Glad to help. Okay, so we're going to talk about type four today. And uh, we're going to talk about type fours in relationship. And I want you to see that uh, this isn't just, oh, Tom was sitting in his office one day thinking of stuff. Okay, I've been researching, reading books about the Enneagram and relationships, Enneagram and love and work. Enneagram in relationships, and of course all the old standards as well that sit on my desk and periodically I pick up on relationships and Enneagram, as well as all the shelf, shelves filled with books on relationships and marriage and all that stuff that I hit from time to time. Let's type four want in a relationship. I think you could answer it in one word. Soulmate. Soulmate. Or is that two words? It's one word. Two words made into one word. Soulmate. Um, fours are longing for a deep emotional connection in, in their relationships. They want to be seen, and I'm looking at my notes. My notes come from my reading, okay? And so some of this is notes and some of it is, is me thinking about those notes, okay? So fours, of course, long to be seen for who they are. They long to be understood. They long to be accepted. They want to belong. And realize, guys, that we tend in our health to bring the very things we're looking for in our unhealth. So in fours, when they say they want to be understood, they want to be valued, they want to belong, they want to feel like they can be themselves, they want to be honest, what do fours bring? Fours bring that for the whole world. Fours provide that for the rest of us. When I need somebody to listen to me and I can be completely honest with them and they'll empathize with me and understand me, if I need that in my life, go to a four because fours bring that into the world. They, they'll, they'll, they'll saddle up next to you and, and help you stand up and help you through whatever challenge or crisis or hardship or, or just sort things out in your life. Fours are looking for that kind of a companion. They're looking for somebody that will let them be themselves, somebody that will let them be true to themselves and let them be quirky, uh, but also let them be deep, okay? And fours can be quite quirky and deep. Before you get offended, remember, this is a seven talking, the king of quirky, all right? So they long to be understood and appreciated for the unique contributions they make. Fours don't want to bring a casserole Fours want to show up in some way that's more special than that, uh, to make a unique contribution into the world. They spend a great deal of time considering their life, what it all means, where it's all going. They, you could say, I know we say they live in their feelings, but they also live in their heads. They live in their dreams, trying to understand themselves, understand their identity, understand the world around them. They long to, in a sense, escape from this mundane existence of nine to five work days and fall into something, be swept away into something that's grand and big and important and meaningful. And so that's a lot of stress if you're you know, expected to be that person. If you're in a relationship with a four and you're expected to be the person who comes in and sweeps them off away from this mundane existence and gives them you know, a better existence, a deeper, a more meaningful, a richer, that's a lot of stress on the average relationship. And just that sound of average relationship probably sounds unappealing to a four. Uh, they resist the ordinary. Um, they, you might say, resist even feeling ordinary. They appreciate depth and intimacy, looking for a soulmate with which they can share all of their positive and negative emotions, their negative energy, their positive energy, their dark things, their light things, the ups and downs, joys, highs and lows. Again, that could be a lot of stress on the average relationship. And I say average because in a sense, you know, 
um, a lot of us are okay with average relationships. I mean, we just want a companion. We just want somebody that we can love, that loves us, that you know we can do things with, and we may not be seeking to have a lot of depth you know, or to know ourselves and to know this other person passionately. And I think a four could get very disenfranchised with an ordinary feeling relationship, which realize fours might be the goal of the person that you're with to just have an ordinary relationship. They might be thinking, why can't we just go do fun things together? Why do we always have to talk about deep, heavy feelings? I don't want to know myself. I don't want to know uh, you know how I feel about things I want to just watch television and go for a walk and eat pizza and walk the dog and play board games and sing karaoke and let's just why does it have to be meaningful why do things have to be deep why do they have to be rich you know there's a richness in the ordinary there's a richness in things being simple okay so they're looking for a true soulmate with which they can share their positive and negative emotions. They are committed to fully feeling and fully expressing their emotions. Okay, that's good, but you know, again, not every person may be prepared for you to fully express your emotions. They may not may not want to attend to volatile emotions or turmoil. Sometimes they need to withdraw. Um let's see withdraw and to a private space let's say that to process their inner thoughts and feelings remember fours are a withdrawn type i always think about cinderella you know at midnight what happens everything turns into a pumpkin and fours can be a little bit like that you know they can put on the facade they can they can play nice they can they can be engaging they can be you know everything that they need to be that everybody wants them to be but then there's a certain point where they kind of feel themselves kind of turning into a pumpkin and so they got to get away from this you know like Elsa, you just conceal, don't feel, but I gotta let it go. I gotta, I gotta eventually, I gotta let it out. I can't, I can't pretend, I can't play this charade, I can't play this masquerade any longer. And so at some point, you're gonna see them, you know, you could say come up for air, or you might say descend into the basement. They're gonna go back and withdraw and process what they're feeling and why they're feeling what they're feeling and what it all means, okay? Their inner thoughts and feelings. They may find it hard to connect with people being so unique and different. It's great to be unique and different, okay? But being unique and different can make it hard for you to connect. Um, I remember walking in a while back into a store and there was a young lady there who was dressed very differently, okay? Very differently, all in black, lots of piercings, lots of chains and stuff hanging off of her and, you know, brightly colored shaved head with, you know, I mean, everything on the surface was like, pay attention to me, pay attention. I mean, that's what it's screaming. And in my head, I, it's screaming, notice me, pay attention. I don't know if she was a four. I'm just using it as a, an analogy. Maybe she was, probably she was, but I don't know. Um, she might've been, you know, sevens can look odd or different, but it's more like, look at this joke, watch me be funny, okay? And I don't think fours are saying, look at me being funny, look at me being humorous. This, this young lady was, it was like everything about her was screaming, to the world notice me i'm different i'm set apart i'm unique yet what i noticed is my own inclination to like dart my head away and not notice her and i noticed as i watched people they were doing the same thing it's like everybody nobody wants to like make her feel like she's an object to be you know looked at or observed or strange you know nobody wants to like Everybody's cautious, I think. Like, they don't want to come across like, oh my goodness, you know? Oh my goodness, Lorraine, look at her. Nobody wants to come across like that. So what I noticed is my own inclination and the inclination of others to kind of just dart your attention away and, you know, other, you know, little children are pointing, look, mommy, look. And the moms are like, so it, this, this, this could backfire for some fours, you know, wanting to stand out, wanting to be unique and special and different. You may, 
Others may find it hard to connect to that. Others may find it hard to relate to that. And so the very thing that, in a sense, I would think that that girl is seeking attention or, and I know she's probably not seeking attention. She's seeking whatever it is she's seeking. I don't think that the response that she's hoping for is that everyone will just kind of dart their attention away from her. That is something worth thinking about. If you are a four, if you're raising a four, if you're in a relationship with a four, that's just an interesting something I've observed and noticed about myself and others who were relating in a very superficial way, mind you, in a, in a uh, whatever, a store or a mall setting. The worldview of the four, you might say, is something is missing. Others have it. I've been abandoned. I've been rejected. Something is missing. Other people have it. I've been abandoned. I've been rejected. Now, you can hear if you're listening, right? You can hear in there is going to be some envy. Other people have it. And envy, when it's turned up full volume, might be, and I need to remove it from them. Everyone needs to see them suffer like I suffer. That's maybe envy turned up all the way to its highest intense level is I need to knock them off of this position and usurp them. Like I, I think of Scar, you know, on, on the Lion King. Um, fours can f emotionally attach to others quickly. Sometimes they may struggle with that, but I think maybe the tendency would be to attach to people quickly. At their best, they can be empathetic, warm, friendly, very creative, but you know, fours can easily become disenfranchised with the relationship as it is. Remember, they don't like the mundane, they don't feel comfortable around the ordinary, and when a relationship is elusive, then it's something to pursue. It's something they're missing. And so their attention is going to be on what it is they're missing and how this other person, almost like a highly idealized, highly uh, standard idealized version of this person is going to come and sweep me off my feet and rescue me and fill the empty places within me and, and sort of, you know, complete my experience. And so you start dating this person or maybe even marry this person and then one day you look across the table and you realize this is just old Ned you know this is just boring old Ned I married boring old Ned you know what do I do now and a four might find themselves getting disenfranchised once the relationship starts to feel old comfortable worn tired boring you know like it, this should be more intense and maybe they'll feel more comfortable in their past like you know we need to recapture recapture the way things felt at the beginning when there was this when there was this uh when there was this chase that was on we need to recapture that intensity or maybe they'll get focused on the future on what it could be and and why is it why is this relationship not all that it could be you know kind of like what are you doing wrong why are you not uh, opening up to make this relationship as intense as it could be and as good as it could be and what are they missing of course it's obvious how good the relationship just is all right now on its own in its ordinary average way how good the relationship is because their focus of their attention is on the way it used to be or the way it could be if only these things were different something's missing something's missing something's missing but you know when you look for something missing what are you going to find you're going to find that something's missing but rather than just appreciating and being present to what is the focus of the attention is on what is missing and believe me, as a seven, I get that. I get that that uh, in my own way. Okay, so they may look for their partner to rescue them. I didn't write it. Okay, I read it. They may look for their partner to rescue them or provide them with what they feel they are lacking. You know, okay, interesting. Their tendency toward general unhappiness and melancholy can create tension in the relationship. You know, if let's say just I'm a seven, if I was with the four, I'm sure the four would stretch me. I'm sure the four would make me want to make me deal with things that sevens don't naturally want to deal with, like intense emotions and sadness and and those kinds of things. And that would be a very rewarding, you know, aspect of that kind of a relationship. But 
think about how a seven might relate to all of that melancholy, dark cloud, gray cloud kind of, you know, sentiment. If, if in my house I walked home and I saw on my wife's face this melancholy sadness, I would immediately feel like I need to push that cloud out of the way. I need to do something to make this rainbow and sunshine again. Well, you could see how that could irritate the four and how the four could irritate the seven. And that's just one relationship. Um, you could go around the dial and you might see, you know, the ones who just want to get their stuff done and just want to be responsible and just want to get the house painted and just want to get the room cleaned up. And why are you laying on the bed depressed and sad and crying and you're just being lazy? You need to get over it. You, Man, talk about feeling misunderstood, right? Or what about the two is going to help you overcome all of these feelings? You might feel misunderstood. Or the three who looks at you and says, are you ready for your best life now? You might feel misunderstood or uncared for. Um, there's a sense in which to fix a four is to diminish the four. Okay, that's not original with me. Okay, that came right out of this book, Helen Palmer. To fix a four is to diminish them. In other words, maybe the four doesn't want to be fixed. They want to be understood. And so when they're telling you about their pain and their loss and their heartache and their sadness and how things are off, if you're a one or an eight and you just want to fix things, like, okay, tell me what the problem is. All right, well, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. To a four, that's going to come across like you don't really want to sit with me. You don't really want to engage with me. You just want to brush me off, fix my problems. A nine, a relationship with a nine might, might feel very similar because nines, they sort of have that attitude like, just tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to do. And so the four is unloading these deep, heavy, weighty, sad, difficult, challenging thoughts. And the nine's kind of looking at you like, I mean, what do you want me to do? I'll do whatever you want me to do. You want me to? You want me to? You want me to sing in the choir? I'll sing in the choir. Do you want me to? You want me to turn the TV off? I'll turn the TV off. And maybe the four isn't really wanting you to do anything. They maybe just want to connect and be understood, and for you to empathize with them, hold their hand, walk with them on the journey, and say, "Man, I can't imagine how difficult that's got to be." And um, you know, we're going to get through this together maybe there's more, I don't know, but I, I think that relating to other types, this could be a problem because I know it would be a problem with me if every time I came home, there was this melancholy blue sad. I would feel like I have a bag of, I feel like I have a bag of medicine and that is to bring joy into the world, but it's not working. Every time I try to bring joy into the world, I'm, I'm met with sad, depressive melancholy, which to me feels awful, but for the four, that might just kind of be kind of sweet. Like, I've even read that. Sweet melancholy. A sweet sadness. Which, okay, doesn't make sense to me. But I'm not a four. So I might feel like I can't win. Or I, I don't have the remedy for this problem. And there you go again. The four is a problem. Right? And so the four is going to think, okay... I've been told all my life I'm too much for people. I've been told all my life that I'm a problem. I've been told all my life, you know, how dramatic I am. I've been told all my life. And so they're going to further spiral down probably. And the person relating to them might feel very frustrated like I can't win. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make them better. I don't know how to relieve them. I don't know how to... <sighs> Why are we in relationship problems, right? All of us. I mean, we're all trying to relate to each other. And that's really the goal of this channel in many ways is just let's understand as much as we can about each other so that we can relate to each other, so that we can we can enter into each other's frame of reference a little bit and love each other and be more compassionate with each other. Okay, so where am I now? Um, the tendency toward general unhappiness ugh, and melancholy. Ugh, can create a tension in the relationship. When stressed, they can become moody, moody, 
you know, we're often very unaware of our own moods and how much they play into the way we're relating to life and to people. Uh, but fours, of course, you know, could become very moody. They could become stubborn. They could become self-absorbed, you know, self-focused. Like, this is about me. They don't want me at their party because they don't like me. They, they're not talking to me because they don't like... And it's like self-absorbed. Like, there's something wrong with me, and that's why everybody's treating me the way they are. Attention-seeking and have sort of a woe-is-me kind of attitude toward life. They can take little things personally. Often with fours, you're dropping pebbles, but they're landing on fours like, like boulders, okay? Fours have this unique ability to take in everything negative about themselves and to brush away anything positive about themselves. So if you compliment a four and you say, hey, you did a great job on your art today or your project or your presentation, you know, you meant it as something positive. But the inclination of a four, the natural inclination is to hear something about your comment that puts them down in some way like oh yeah you're telling me that now but you know the last four times i did reports you never said anything positive and and you can feel a little bit if you're not aware you might feel a little bit like i can't i don't know how to relate to this person like i try to tell them something good and they're upset with me. I try to tell them something positive, and now they want to confront me over what did I mean by what I said. And you can just feel like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I meant. What do I need to do? I'm not trying to be a problem. Okay. All right. And I don't know. Maybe the four themselves doesn't really know how they feel about it, and they're trying to sort it out. They're trying to figure out, you know, what, what, what how do I feel about this? Okay. So now where am I? I'm a seven. I'm easily distracted. Good time for my old brown cup of water. And I've actually got some hot tea today. Look at me. I'm drinking hot tea. If you wonder if I'm a seven, I'm a seven. Okay. Ah, hot tea, a spot of tea. Okay. Focus. All right. Go to five. Seven, go to five, right? Focus. All right. Um, they can, uh, they fear abandonment. Okay. Fear abandonment. They tend to pull others in close with their love, affection, and emotional connection. And they're just interesting people. So if you, you know, are looking for somebody that's interesting or somebody that's, you know, going to bring some quirky pizzazz into your life and your life is pretty ho-hum and monotone and monochrome and now this person comes in who is just so alive and so interested in life and vibrant and eccentric and okay so that may suck a person in they may be attracted to that um but then the four, when they start feeling like this is becoming an ordinary kind of uh, pedestrian relationship, they might push away from that. Remember this push-pull effect of fours. They pull in and then they push away. If they feel like this is becoming ordinary or, or too predictable, they're not interested in it anymore. They're interested in what is missing well this relationship isn't missing it's here so they might push away from it or if they feel like they're losing their sense of themselves to this other person and they're becoming one and they need to remain separate and unique and different and they're just becoming mrs johnson and they don't want to just be mrs johnson they might push away from this relationship of course the person relating to them could feel like they don't know where they stand. It's like uh, you you want to be you want you don't want me you want me to call you don't want me to call. I don't know what you want me to do. Okay, this could feel exhausting to both parties in the relationship. Um, the four may just need to push away to go back and withdraw and process what they're feeling and process what they're thinking. But all I know is maybe you got up and walked out in tears. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Maybe I don't need to do or say anything, but I might feel like I need to do or say something. I might feel like I hurt you or upset you. I don't even know what I did. 
All right, they may go to great lengths to expand their relationships. Oh, wait, let me say it this way, to expand the existing relationship. They may go to great lengths to sort of like make this relationship better. Think of it as like a gardener that like over gardens, okay? Sixes can do the same thing. Like you're supposed to plant a garden, walk away, right? Let the sun, let the rain do its work. It needs time. You walk away. Yeah, you come back once every couple days and you pull a few weeds, but you leave it alone. And what happens? The garden flourishes. Well, there's some types like eights that walk away from the garden and they don't, or eights, I mean, sorry, nines, who might walk away from the garden and not come back until it's time to harvest it and be like, oh, wow, there's weeds everywhere. What happened? I guess I should have been paying attention. Think of fours and maybe some sixes and maybe some twos, you know, maybe some other types that could overtend the garden. And, you know, when you overtend the garden, you start looking for weeds and you can if you're not careful you can pull up the good crops with the weeds right you can pull up the good ears of grain with 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 the weeds so you might you might need to kind of relax a little bit like you're over interested in how can we improve this relationship you can kill the golden goose by dissecting them right you can kill the relationship by constantly prodding at it, constantly poking at it, constantly trying to make it better or make it something that it's not. Or wishing it was something that it's not. If they don't feel that they're part, I'm getting a lot of text messages. Isn't that the way it goes? When you don't want to talk to anybody or you're busy, bing, 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 bing. When you want to talk to somebody, nobody's there. Okay. They may go to great lengths to deepen and expand and, you know, get connected to the person in their relationship if they don't feel like their partner wants to reciprocate that or they don't feel like their partner understands how they feel what are the chances they're probably going to feel very deeply unloved and uncared for in the relationship as a result they have the unique ability to sit with others and empathize with others and so they might expect that the other person is going to do that for them and when they don't that could be a very low moment they could provide a huge support for other people and I would imagine that the four is going to expect that you're going to want to connect to me on that deep level and you're going to be available to me and you're going to care about me and let me be open and honest. You know, I, I, I can't imagine a four ever. If I were to unload even like the deepest, darkest, craziest feelings in the world, if I were to say... Let me just go really simple. If I were to say something like, you know, I don't think my marriage is working out. I, I, I'm thinking about separating. I'm thinking about getting a divorce. I just can't imagine a four saying, oh, oh, we got to stop this conversation. Oh, this is too much. I can't process a divorce. Oh, I, I can't. Don't, I don't, don't make me go there. I can't imagine a four doing that. No, a four is going to just lean in. And, and, and let you say whatever you need to say and let it come out and they're just gonna join you in that journey. So how do you think a four might respond if when they're opening up, somebody treats them that way? Oh, 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 I what? Oh, you're gonna get another ear piercing? Oh, oh, what, you like uh, Marilyn Manson? Oh, oh my goodness, I can't, I can't take it. I can't, I can't tolerate it, I can't, I don't make me hear anymore. Is it any wonder a four might feel misunderstood? Imagine trying to search for what is uniquely you. Well, you're going to go into some pretty strange areas of life, right? You're going to you're going to open some doors to some closets and some uh, pantries and some alleys that most people don't ever go down. You're looking for what it is that makes you uniquely you and special and different, and so you're going to maybe experiment and touch into some places in life that a lot of types are never even going to consider. And then when you share that, hey, I, I found this thing that helps me maybe think about, maybe that relates to me in some way. And you get, you get the response of, oh, yeah, bring garlic, Dracula, vampire. You know, when you get that kind of response, I would think that a four might feel very misunderstood or not loved or like they're bad or they're wrong or they're creepy or 
or that they're they really are different and it just further solidifies the narrative that there's something wrong with me there's something missing something wrong other people have it and i've been rejected because look at them rejecting you oh 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 okay all right melancholy let's talk about melancholy for a minute I do get into melancholy states every once in a while, even as a seven. Um, when I think about my kids growing up, ugh. isn't that funny when you think about it? The seven's worst nightmare, growing up. <laughs> uh, right? Growing up. When I think about growing up, when I think about the kids growing up, you know, I can get kind of melancholy. I wouldn't say it's sweet, you know. Um, but I, 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 I don't grasp true melancholy. But th this is what I read. Very interesting. Melancholy is the reminder that something is missing. It is a sweet sadness based on the perception of loss. Fours are now longing to recover that abandoned relationship. Remember, the childhood wound of the four is that mother's love was withdrawn from you for no apparent reason that you, you didn't do anything and so you're left wondering what is it about me that makes me unlovable what is it about me that causes this abandonment that causes this neglect that causes this rejection there must be something inherently flawed in me that causes mother's withdrawn love now that's not saying that that your mom did that to you it's the childhood wound every type has a childhood wound. it's kind of like a metaphor for you know the sort of the message we we told ourselves you might say it that way um, envy is a reminder that others seem to enjoy happiness that the four has been denied so when you see everybody else relating to one another and seem to be okay with their average lives with their average careers and their average relationships and and I'm not able to be happy in that it does spark a sense of envy. I wish that I could just be like one of them. I'll, I'll never be one of them, but I wish I could be happy like they are happy. The search is motivated, motivated by the conviction that there, there has got to be more than just this ordinary life. There must be more than this provincial life. I don't know, Belle, is she a five? Is she a four? I don't know. I guess I can kind of see it both ways. She seems kind of five-ish, but maybe she's a four. Her, the books that she's interested in, you know, are kind of the romance, right? Sweeped off her feet and she ends up, I'm different. I'm in love with a beast. I don't know. You could make a case, I think, for must be more than this provincial life. Um, contrast that with Ariel, the seven. Uh, part of their world i want to i want to over there is i have all of this stuff look at this place it's filled with my gluttony but it's not enough i need more i'm missing out on something the, there's the fundamental difference fours i'm missing something i am missing something everybody else has i'm missing it sevens i'm missing out on something so, this could be more better more fun more exciting more enthusiastic i just need to be over there where the grass is greener but I don't think sevens are feeling like I'm, there's no, something inherently flawed in me. No, of course not. All right. So their search is motivated by the conviction that there is more than just this ordinary life. Uh, the thinking, you might say it like this. We would not be seeking more in life if we were already complete. Okay. Attracted to what is missing, to what is distant, to what is unavailable, to what is hard to get. Envy is the belief that others possess this missing element. Look at them. They're loved. They're satisfied while I'm deprived. Mood, manners, mood. If I change my mood, my, my sophisticated style and manners, losing myself in luxury and in good, and good taste, refinement, are all in a sense, external life supports to bolster internal self-esteem questions and issues. Now, 
That is a profound statement. And it came from Palmer's book. Okay, so if, if you want to be beat in the face, if you're a four, you want to be punched in the face, she'll do it. Okay, um, because it was painful when I was reading it, and I'm not a four. Let, let me say that again. Okay, mood, manners, luxury, good taste, and you can probably add a lot more things refinement, sophistication, knowledge, um, all of those things are external life supports to bolster the internal self-esteem questions and issues. In other words, I have a unique image to cover my inner sense of shame. Now, that's a, that's a very deep thought and maybe a very frightening thought. Um, my suffering sets me apart. I am an outsider. Longs for the missing ingredient for happiness, the absent lover, a distant friend, deeper communion with God, a deeper sense of self, a deeper sense of community. I'm going to put that in my notes too. A deeper sense of community. Okay, if only I could spell. All right. They may feel sad in the face of happiness. And this is one of those things that you'll see with fours that really leaves the newbie kind of scratching their head. Everybody's at the family reunion. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's relating wonderfully to each other. And where's the four? Running off to the bathroom, running off to their bedroom. You know, is it so people will miss them and go after them and say, hey, where did you go? We want you at the party. You know, it's got to feel good to be wanted. Maybe I feel unwanted all the time. And so now they're coming after me and telling me they want me. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's a part of it for some. Maybe like in their junior high years. I don't know. Where you're trying to really understand life and coming to terms with who you are and what you love and what you care about. Um, but when surrounded by happiness, happiness external to you may just be a reminder of your own inner unhappiness. And so when you see happiness, it reminds you of your own inner unhappiness. When you see people relating and connecting, it reminds you of how d fragmented you are and how rejected or distant or disconnected or all of the, okay, it might just remind you of that and bring about sadness. What would bring about happiness for most people could bring about sadness for a four. Fours could repeat a cycle in relationships of desiring the relationship, acquiring the relationship, becoming disappointed and disenfranchised with it, rejecting it, and then the cycle starts over again. Once it's no longer, once you're no longer together, then it becomes attractive again. Now realize that cycle could get exhausted, exhausting for the people that are relating to you. I mean, you have to see that, right? That you love me, you're tired of me, you don't love me, you don't call me, and then three days later, you love me again. Okay, how many times do we go through this cycle before I start to think, this isn't going forward, this is not what I want to sign up for. It's got to be confusing to both people, the four and the person they're in relationship with, so try to have a little compassion, you know, for each other. Um, immediate relationships, the ones I have, pale in comparison of the promise of the uh, idealized, what could be. Remember, fours are idealists. It could be better. Let's tinker with it. Let's poke at it and let's make it better. Well, you might poke at it and kill it. You know, how many pokes does it take before it just dies? You know, something that you may want to consider. Relationships should be permanently vibrant. Relationships should be permanently all-consuming. Relationships should be permanently passionate and permanently alive. Okay, that's a lot of expectation. That's pretty high expectations. Every meal should be, you know, a gourmet dinner. Every relationship should be a gourmet relationship. You know, there's great comfort in mashed taters and roast beef and gravy and 
peas. That's a pretty average meal, but it sustains, doesn't it? Every once in a while, it is nice to have a gourmet meal, but by and large, most meals are just pretty average. And average can be great once, it's, once it is accepted. But what about them? What do they have? They over there, they have a gourmet meal and I have just this average meatloaf and meatloaf, beetloaf. I hate meatloaf. Envy. What do they have? Comparing. You know, is comparing yourself and your state with others making you happier? Well, maybe you don't need to be happy. Maybe you like melancholy. Okay, well, let me say it this way. Is comparing yourself with others constantly comparing yourself with others and your relationship with others or, or idealized standards in your head of what it could be, is that really improving your life? Maybe it is in some ways, but I would at least challenge you to consider that maybe it's not always improving your life. Maybe, maybe it's not making things better always. Uh, fours find it difficult to maintain interest in what they already have. I get that. I'm a seven. I understand that. Uh, the real thing is not as compelling as the one that is on the other side of the fence. The real thing that I have is not as interesting as what is obscured and what is removed and what is distant from me. Um, well, that could keep you from experiencing the real thing in life. Your quest for the highly stylized could keep you away from the actual. Can you imagine back in the old days if you had a black and white TV and everywhere you went, you know, people were selling color televisions? Well, you might go home and think, I'm not even going to watch television. I can't stand to watch this black and white TV. This is ridiculous. Everybody else has a colored TV except me. I have to watch black and white TV? I'll fine. I just won't even watch it. Okay, who are you really punishing? You know, if you can just shrug your shoulders and say, one day, you know, maybe we'll find a color TV, but right now, for the next six months, we're not able to afford it. I'm just going to have to accept the, it the way it is. Once you accept, that it's a black and white TV, guess what? You can get lost in the programs, lost in the stories, and enjoy the episodes just as much, perhaps, as if they were a color TV. But if you won't let yourself accept the TV because it's black and white, I guess you can just sit in your room, alone and sad. Um, the rest of the family's out there saying, why don't you watch TV with us? No, it's not color TV. I don't want to watch black and white. Okay, it's your choice. It's your choice. A lot of things in life, we can't, we can't make them the way we want them to be. So what do we do? Well, we do everything we can do, and then at some point, we just have to accept things the way they are. Or we can just... We can just fight against life, strive against life, wrestle with life, but usually life wins. All right, so where are we at? The feelings of the four are reality. They might over-identify a little bit with their feelings. Five wing could be very good for you here because fives register feelings as thoughts. Yes, it's information, but it's not the only information. I like objective data. And that could be good to balance out the fours, over-identifying with feelings and being so emotionally connected, they might benefit a little bit from the five's emotional detachment and just keep things in balance a little bit. The wings are there to balance us, folks. Okay. All right. Um, we already talked about, let's say, it's talking about conflict, communication. We talked about fixing a four. Okay. Um, it's important to listen and understand a four without judgment, critique, or pressure. Fours may need time to process what they're thinking and feeling. They're honest uh, when they present what they're thinking and feeling, and they might appreciate that in responding in the same way. Fours fear rejection from others, and so fours may preemptively strike with rejection themselves. So before you reject them, they might just reject you. And so that four might come across as kind of got like a chip on their shoulder or that they're aloof. Hmm. Aloof. This is aloof. 
I'm not interested in anything you guys have to say. I'm not interested in, I don't need you as friends. See, there's a fear that you're going to reject me. If I were to actually open myself up to you and you were to then reject me, that would make me feel those terrible feelings that there's something flawed in me. So I'm just going to preemptively strike by, I don't need anybody. I'm above everyone. There's the aristocrat. You wondered where it was, there it is. Or the bohemian. I do my own thing in my own way. I'm above it all. Well, why are you above it all? Because in your heart, you feel like you're beneath it all. So you come across as above it all. It's, it's a realize that it is a self defensive strategy. And you may paint yourself into a corner because maybe we do want to connect with you. Maybe we're not going to reject you. Maybe when we're making fun of you, we don't really mean to make fun of you. We're just trying to connect with you. We're just trying to be witty and to have a relationship. But you took it personal and you felt rejected. And maybe, maybe you're just a four feeling four stuff. And the Enneagram helps us see that, that sometimes I'm just a seven feeling seven stuff. There's no real problem here, except that I'm a seven feeling seven stuff. I need to return back to life and not put so much, so much importance on my impulses and compulsions. And sometimes it's helpful for a four to maybe just realize, hey, what I'm feeling right now is all the stuff that these books say that fours feel. Maybe that's all this is. Maybe I'm just feeling the stuff that fours feel. Maybe there's not really anything that needs to be done. Maybe my girlfriend or my boyfriend are just fine the way they are and they don't need to grow and change and develop and stretch. Maybe the relationship is just fine the way it is. Maybe I can accept life. Improve it, sure. But accept it the way it is okay um force fear rejection from others so they preemptively strike by rejecting people first this protects them from the fear and the threat of further abandonment which is what they're afraid of right trying to find balance between being not too far away you'll miss the other person and not so close that you can't live without the other person so fours they want to be connected but they don't want to lose themselves in the connection and if they feel like they're starting to lose themselves in the connection, then you might see them disconnect. Connection is very important to fours. Long conversations, verbal expressions of love, uh, complete oneness and physical closeness all build the intimacy they desire. Or realize that some types like eights they, and fives, they may have a hard time with that kind of vulnerability and openness. Fours need to truly feel this emotional connection with their partner in order to open up. Fours feel both positive and negative emotions very strongly like an electric current, like an electric current running through them. Emotional intimacy and attachment is based on how comfortable they feel sharing their deep feelings, their true feelings, their authentic feelings with others. If their attempt at connection is dismissed or unreciprocated, what are they going to feel? Hurt? Isolated? Rejected? Not cared for? Like they can't show up fully to this relationship? Like what's the point? This isn't going anywhere. I can't, I can't, you're not really available to me. If their attempt at connection, okay. In relationships, fours kind of have like an eight, a what you see is what you get kind of attitude. They, they may actually lead with their negatives about themselves, what they fear about themselves, like bring out the negatives and sort of display the, the worst parts of themselves to see if you're going to reject me. So think of it like testing people. If you were to know this deep, dark thing about me, if you were to see this side of me, if you were to know that I think about this, you'd probably reject me. And a lot of people might. So Will you pass the test and not reject them and stay with them and say, oh, well, you know, I mean, okay, well, tell me more. All right. Um, you won't have to wonder where you stand in a relationship with a four. They want to be fully truthful and honest with you. Um, fours don't like trying to be someone that they're not. 
in a relationship with a four, you might remember to stay calm through the push and pull and the intense emotional, moody, melancholy departures and uh, push-pull reconnections. Stay steady and be a rock of strength. Uh, fours have a profound fear of rejection. If, if people get too close, they may discover my fatal flaw. Uh, if they see beneath the the plumage feathers, if they see beneath my top hat, if they see beneath my um, um, my my upper crust, my class, they may discover that I'm only a little brown mouse underneath all of these feathers, underneath all of this plumage. It's just me, a little brown mouse. If they discover that, they'll reject me. Image is often heightened as a protective measure. Elite memberships, aristocrat. A unique social presentation, looking attractive and somewhat aloof. Above the common crowd, above the common man, above the vulgarians. Envy, you see, can vanish in luxurious and elegant surroundings. A graceful manner, original conversation and candlelight all keep the commonplace at bay that came straight out of this book by the way if you want to go that's painful isn't it isn't it? ooh ow people always say dr lehue you you're so negative on all your videos well i don't know i'm not trying to be negative i just think if you can see the dragon for what it is then maybe we can start winning a little bit against the dragon a graceful manner, original conversation, candlelight, all keep commonplace at bay. Attracted to the depth of things, they resonate with antiquity. That means ancient stuff. You know, let's go on an archaeological dig to a remote part of the world where we're going to discover these ancient scrolls. Rituals, ceremonies, they're attracted to those things. Why? Those things move them and their attention off of the shame of the mundane, ordinary existence of life that most of us live. So what are some realistic steps that you could take in a relationship to a four? In a relationship with a four, it's important that you take them seriously. Fours can be witty and fun, and yet they can feel misunderstood or, uh, or hurt if they're teased or if they're called out for being too sensitive. Remember, sensitivity, that's their superpower. So they don't want to be humiliated because they're able to completely empathize with other people because they're so sensitive. Sensitivity is their strength. Show up for them, be present with them, let them know you care about them with intentional listening and show empathy yourself, engaging in conversations with them. Express how you feel. You might have to use grand gestures. You know, you might have to kind of sweep them off their feet a little bit with something surprising. Hey, you're getting kidnapped and we're picking you up for the day and I'm gonna take you out to this beautiful restaurant, this, this idyllic scenic lake setting, a picnic. That, it's gonna mean a lot. It's gonna mean a lot to them. Uh, grand gestures, thoughtful planning and intimate conversation. Their expectation in a relationship could be a little bit unrealistic. It's good for them to know that, that maybe they're wanting the sort of the Harlequin dime store romance uh, image of a relationship. And images of, of things never really are uh, as accurate you know, as the real thing. Don't settle for an image when you've got the real thing right in front of you. Just how can we make the real thing better, you know, stronger? Um, their insistence on intensity can make relating to them feel kind of stormy at times. So, you know, you need to figure out what, what your umbrella is for dealing with stormy. Maybe you just get more quiet and more passive. Maybe you just get more inquisitive and ask more questions. But you might be careful um, in the way you respond to all of this stormy, electric, intense, emotional energy. In other words, you might need to balance it by becoming more grounded yourself. After all, what uh, dissipates electricity is, is something being well-grounded. Spam risk. Don't you love it? 
Almost done. Okay. Um, fours want to be moved, swept away, taken somewhere higher than this ordinary existence. The closeness we used to experience or what the relationship could become if only you'd show up fully um, away from the things the way things are now. Be prepared to be pushed beneath the surface if you're in relationship with a four. Challenge to identify your own convictions, your own authentic truth. And realize, you know, some of us, we, we may not really want to spend a lot of time on those kinds of things, but the four is going to push for that. And it can be, a, I'm sure, a rich, rewarding experience to, to have that kind of a partner in your life. Fun, exciting, thrilling, creative, quirky, witty, deep, heavy, weighted, it all goes together for fours. And um, all right, so be present to life. Thank you guys. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for joining me for this one, and uh, I'll see you next time.